Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, part of the Marine Protected Areas Center webinar series, sponsored by NOAA's National Marine Protected Areas Center and OCTO. I'm Zach Canizzo with NOAA's National Marine Protected Areas Center, and I will be your moderator today. We are very excited for today's webinar, supporting self-financing mechanisms in MPAs, presented by Guillaume Laporte and Nastasia Famami. Guillaume Laporte holds a master's degree in environmental policy and sustainable development from the Institut Catholique de Paris, initially specialized in economic valuation of ecosystem services provided by coral reefs. He worked for four years in French Polynesia, as well as for several international programs. Thereafter, he focused on cost benefit analysis of marine protected areas, notably through a Pew Charitable Trust project. At the same time, he also supervised a monitoring program for green sea turtle egg laying sites and taught at the University of French Polynesia. Having joined Vertigo Lab in January 2018, Guillaume has actively worked on the development and structuring of blue seeds. Within the consultancy firm, he has worked on several projects related to marine conservation finance. Nastasia is a French qualified lawyer, and she holds a master's degree in marine biology and conservation from the University of York in the UK. After three years of experience as a tax lawyer in Paris, she decided to start a professional reconversion with the objective of using her experience and skills for the protection of the oceans. As part of her master's degree in marine biology, she wrote her final thesis on the development of a management plan for the South Erie Marine Protected Area in the Maldives and completed an internship on coral reefs in the Maldives with the Blue Marine Foundation. Nastasia joined Blue Seeds team in July 2020 as a project officer. We are very excited to have them both here today. But before I turn it over to, to Guillaume, I would like to let you know that we encourage you to ask questions throughout the presentation as they occur to you. Please type your questions in the questions box, which is found at the bottom of your control panel, often on the right-hand side of your screen, and we will pose the questions to the speakers at the end of the presentation. With that, I will turn things over to, to Guillaume. Thank you very much um, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Guillaume. And today, uh, Nastasia and I, we are going to introduce you to, to the work that we are doing at Blue Seeds with a focus on financial strategy and financing mechanisms, self-financing mechanisms, actually, for marine protected areas. Um, so the presentation will be in three main parts. First, I'm going to talk to you about Blue Seeds, what we do and what is our vision and what are our objectives. Uh, then Nastasia will talk to you about self-financing mechanism and especially a guide that we launched uh, at the beginning of 2021 related to, it, it's a practical guide uh, ded dedicated to MPA managers for the implementation of self-financing mechanism. And then finally, I'm going to talk to you about the support programs that Blue Seeds develop to support and to and to help MPA managers into the process of implementing self-financing mechanism for MPAs. Uh, the presentation will be about 35 minutes, and then I hope you will have a lot of a lot of questions for us, and and we will start answering your questions. I wanted to start with this uh, with this quick uh, quick sentence. This is a sentence that we use a lot in our uh, when we do presentation to make people understand why Blue Seed is focusing on the finance of marine conservation. Uh, this sentence is from Jan Player, which is a famous uh, environmentalist from South Africa. Um, and once Jan Player said that conservation without funding is conversation, and this is really the the starting point of all our thinking, uh, where people working, uh, coming from different uh, backgrounds and different areas of expertise here at Blue Seeds, um, all more or less related to conservation. And we all realized in our past experiences that uh, the finance and the funding of marine conservation was a key issue for a lot of MPA managers. Of course, it's not the only one because we also need to talk about stakeholders' involvement, governance, policies, and so on. But we we, we really realized that uh, financing marine conservation was really a key issue, and that's why Blue Seed decided to, to focus on this topic. Uh, this is uh, basically the, the vision the vision we have here at Blue Seeds uh, for conservation to have real impacts on the marine environment and also, of course, on coastal communities depending on this marine environment. We believe that marine conservation must be coupled with an innovative and sustainable economic approach, which means that we are not only looking at how to finance uh, marine conservation through the, the current and let's say standard 
sources of funding, such as government funding or donor funding, but we are also trying to kind of think out of the box and uh, trying to diversify the sources and the mechanism of funding for marine conservation by implementing uh, new mechanism and new approaches of funding. So this is our team here at Blue Seed. So we are based in we are based in France, uh, in Bordeaux, on the Atlantic coast of France, um, and we are uh, a team of around 10 people with various backgrounds. Uh, we have biologists with us. We have uh, former entrepreneurs that decided to to focus on marine conservation. We have economists. We have lawyers. Um, so we try to to aggregate a different set, a wide set of 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 skills to be able to address these questions and these challenges of uh, financing of marine conservation activities. And so we are a multidisciplinary team, multidisciplinary team, sorry, this is a, a tricky one. Um, we are focused on technical assistance, which means that we mostly try to develop programs and tools and supports uh, to help concretely MPA managers to diversify uh, their incomes and their sources of revenues. Uh, we are not only doing, um, let's say, uh, report and project, but we are really trying to offer something to MPA managers and to empower them in using on the long on the long term uh, the tools and the and the support that we bring to them. So what we are trying to do is to build long-term financial strategy for conservation initiative. So we work a lot on uh, business planning for MPA and implementation of financial strategy for MPA. We also try to be an intermediary between uh, financial stakeholders and uh, the marine conservation world and stakeholders. We also try to develop entrepreneurship uh, in and around MPAs to, to reinforce the fundings of, uh, of marine conservation activities. Um, and we try to give, of course, uh, more impact to the and more e efficiency to the financing of marine conservation. Um, so that's it for this one. Our history. So, as it was said in the beginning, um, Blue Seeds was first and foremost part of a consultancy firm in France, which is called Vertigo Lab. Um, and this uh, this project. Uh, was developed first in the Mediterranean Sea to try and uh, identify new sources of funding and new mechanism of financing for MPA in the Mediterranean Sea. So we were incubated inside this consultancy firm called Vertigo Lab. Last year, we became independent. Uh, so we are now a company on our own and we are trying to develop these new approaches of marine conservation financing, not only for the Mediterranean basin, but also for uh, other parts of the world in which there are MPAs. Uh, and so we develop a range of customized solutions to, uh, to address different issues from uh, different contexts all around the world. Uh, I'm going to go quick on this one because there is too much text. <laughs> um, basically, we can uh, divide our tasks on three main aspects evaluation technical support and development and implementation of concrete solution uh, for marine conservation uh, activities we have several partners both in the mediterranean sea and around the world so we have financial partners such as the mara foundation we have also technical partners and also uh, all the partners that we are working with on the field in MPAs and that are not uh, that are not listed here. Um, to address this, um, these issues and these challenges related to uh, the financing of marine conservation, we developed several tools uh, and solutions. So the first and maybe most important tool that we developed and that Nastasia will talk to you about uh, right after is our practical guide. Uh, for MPA managers to be able to implement self-financing mechanism. Uh, this guide was uh, meant first and foremost for Mediterranean marine protected areas, but we, but we realized that it uh, can also be applied for MPAs in other parts of the world. In this guide, we present a step-by-step -step methodology for MPA managers. Um, this guide is available for free on our website, so feel free to download it. And it comes also with a tool of business planning. 
so you can download it freely as you wish in our website i will give you the link uh, at the end of the presentation we also develop support programs this will be the last part of my presentation right after anastasia uh, the idea is that the guide presents uh, a step-by-step -step approach to mpa managers so that they are able to implement marine conservation activities um, mm. but the guide is not sufficient itself. We realized that it was also important to implement, to propose and to offer support programs to employee managers to help them actually implement uh, the different steps presented in the guide. We also develop several training programs and workshops uh, on business planning, on financial strategy, also on stakeholders involvement, uh, on development of innovative approaches for funding uh, marine conservation. Uh, I was last week in Tunisia for five days to work with uh, 12 different MTA managers on a five-day workshop related to the funding, the sustainable funding of marine conservation activities. I will do the same next week in Turkey. So we develop a broad range of of, uh, of training support um, and training workshop for MTA managers related to the finance of marine conservation. Um, and we also try to develop new approaches for um, marine conservation uh, we won't be talking about all of these new approaches today maybe there will be uh, a following uh, follow maybe there will be following webinars on the, on that topic uh, for example we are working now with wwf mediterranean to develop a pre-financing facility which acts as a revolving fund to support small scale fishermen that are trying to access european funding to transform and to shift their activities, their fishing activities to more sustainable uh, practices. So this is the kind of innovative financing tools that we want to develop uh, to, to foster efficiency of marine conservation activities and efforts. Uh, we also developed what we call local incubators. The idea is that uh, in some areas and especially in some islands of the Mediterranean Sea, there are some communities that are um, not really keen of seeing an MPA implemented in their area because they have decided that the MPA will have a negative impact and negative effect on their livelihoods. The idea is to show that to show to the local communities that MPAs can be uh, are of course uh, a tool to protect the environment, but it can also act as a vector for uh, for the development of sustainable uh, economic activities. So these blue local incubators, that will be the topic of uh, next webinar, maybe, um, is related to the, um, was implemented, sorry, in Lastovo in, in an island in Croatia, which is uh, surrounded by an MPA. And we work with uh, different people from the local communities that were, uh, that were willing to develop uh, their own small business uh, with a positive impact on the environment and we help them to develop these small businesses uh, that we hope and we expect will have a positive impact on the environment and on the MPA. And we also develop uh, finally um, practical solutions. So inside Blue Seeds we develop technical and practical solutions uh, for MPAs and for the funding of marine conservation activities. Um, we develop for example Blue Mooring which is uh, a mobile application, internet application, um, that MPA can use to manage their uh, moorings inside the MPA and that can be used as a platform to make the boaters pay to use the, the moorings or the e-commerce inside the MPA, which uh, can uh, increase the revenues of the MPA through the implementation of the mooring fees and also uh, it's a good tool of managing uh, and controlling the, the boat activities in the MPA. So we are in the phase of experimenting this tool um, in uh, several MPAs in the Med and also in the channel between France and England and we are also there will be another webinar maybe on this blue mooring app and we are also looking for new new sites all around the world to implement this tool. Um, and that's it for the first part. Now I leave the floor to Nastasia. Thank you very much, Guillaume, and th thank you, Zach. Uh, well, hello, everyone. So I'm now going to present our first tool, which is our practical guide on self-financing mechanisms for MPAs. 
And as Guillaume uh, mentioned it, we have presented this guide as adapted to the Mediterranean, com Mediterranean context, but the mechanism described and explained are of course applicable to, to MPAs in any other part of the, of the world. Next slide, please. So what does this guide uh, contain? So first we explain how to build a financial strategy and develop a business plan for MPAs uh, in order to calculate the financing gap of your MPA and identify the most suitable uh, financing mechanisms for your MPA. Um, I mean, adapted to the situation and needs of your MPA. Then we detail in three separate chapters, the visitor fee mechanism, the concession mechanism and the revolving fund mechanism, which is um, simply a microcredit mechanism to enable small scale fishers to move towards more sustainable fishing methods. Next slide, please. So yes, again, for your information, the guide is available free of charge and can be downloaded from the BlueSeed website. So please uh, feel free to, to have a look at it. Next slide, please. So here are the different chapters I have just mentioned. Uh, a preliminary, preliminary chapter on the development of a financial strategy for MPAs, then two chapters on the two self-financing mechanisms, uh, the visitor fee mechanism and the concession fee uh, mechanism, and a final chapter on the cost reduction mechanism, which is the revolving fund microcredit mechanism for small scale fisheries. And for your information, we are also currently writing a fifth chapter on fundraising, uh, our approach is to promote the diversification of funding sources because it is by diversifying its funding sources that an MPA will be more resilient uh, in the face of changes or in the event of crisis, uh, such as the COVID-19 crisis. Um, and we therefore aim to present different types of financing mechanisms uh, and to support MPAs to develop mechanisms that correspond to their situation and needs. Well, how does this guide work? Uh, for each mechanism, we describe its implementation process through a step-by-step -step approach. Next slide, please. The implementation process is divided into several steps. Next slide, please. For each step, you have the expected goal and the expected output. Next slide, please. It's a bit slow, I'm sorry for that. Have you changed the slide, Guillaume? Seems that it's not working. Um, anyway, each step is then composed of one or more actions to be undertaken to reach the said goal. It seems like Guillaume may be frozen. Yes. Nastasia. Uh, do you have a copy of the presentation by any chance? Yes, yes, sure. Okay. All right, Nastasia, I've made you the presenter. Feel free to start presenting when you are ready. Thank you very much. Yeah, Guillaume's account has dropped offline. Mm, I don't know. 
I don't know which screen you're okay. Oh uh, well, we see it. We see it right now. So if you just switch you to see the presentation the, mode. Um, yeah. Okay. Yep. So let me just find the right slide. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Hi Guillaume. Uh, yes, Guillaume. You lost me. I think so. Oh, I'm sorry. So I, I, I started to, to share my screen. Okay, okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Can you see the PowerPoint presentation? We do. Um, okay. And it, it, if you could just put it in presentation mode. Sure. Okay. Sorry. I don't know what happened. <laughs> no, it happens. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I don't know why it's not working. Um, and if I put it like that, is it fine? It's it's okay. Yeah, we can okay. live with this. Um, okay, great. Um, so as I was um, saying, so each step is composed of one or more actions to be undertaken to reach the same goal. You will also find boxes that give examples, concrete examples, to illustrate the, the step. And you will also find some recommendations and focal point in the verb section. And finally, for each mechanism, you have a toolbox uh, listing the possible issues that could arise throughout the implementation process and for each of them, we propose some possible solutions. Uh, so as you can you can see, we really try to make this guide as practical as possible and avoid redundant uh, theoretical aspects of financing mechanisms. So I will now explain in more detail the two self-financing mechanisms described in the guide. Um, the visitor fees are one of the two self-financing mechanisms presented in this guide. And as a reminder, self-financing mechanisms are the mechanisms that allow MPAs to finance their costs from their own resources. Uh, visitor fees, also called user fees or entrance fees, are the fees charged to visitors of an MPA, either directly by the MPA or indirectly by third parties. Uh, and to be able to implement a visitor fee mechanism, you need, of course, site visits to generate uh, incomes, to generate revenues. And you must also have the legal power, the legal permission to implement visitor fees. In practice, setting up visitor fees uh, consists of eight, eight steps described in the guide, uh, where you will find concrete actions to undertake for implementing uh, the visitor fee mechanism. For example, you will find uh, recommendations on how to estimate an adequate fee level based on a willingness to pay survey. You will also find recommendations on how to structure your collection process to reduce cost and foster self-compliance. And for this, online payment tool are, for example, particularly recommended um, for collecting the fees at the, as they are usually easy to implement and, and manage. Some examples of such tools, uh, such online payment tools, could be the re-support uh, tool used in Bonaire and in other places in the Caribbean, for example, and the Blue Marine tool um, to collect marine fees uh, that Guillaume just, uh, just mentioned. And uh, of course, you will find uh, all the details you need in the guide. The second self-financing mechanism uh, presented in the guide is the concession fee mechanism. Uh, so first, what is a concession? Concretely, a concession is a contract made between the concession authority, uh, which is the authority competent for awarding a concession, and a private operator, the concessioner. Uh, through this concession contract, the concessioner is allowed to carry out its activity within the MPA in exchange uh, for the payment of a concession fee and subject to compliance with environmental regulations. And fee revenues would then allow MPA managers to invest, invest in uh, conservation. 
Concessions are commonly used for recreational activities like boat excursions, uh, kayaking, uh, diving, also restaurants, uh, and can in this respect be a great mean of engaging small businesses and local communities in conservation. Here again, you must have the legal permission to develop concessions uh, within the, the MPA and you must uh, identify the concession authority uh, if uh, the concession authority is different from the MPA authority. Then you must have the technical capacities uh, or find assistance uh, to identify concession, um, I mean concessions opportunities, uh, to negotiate uh, concession contracts and uh, to set up adequate concession fees. It is also worth uh, noting that concession can offer a wide range of benefits to MPA. It can generate, uh, for example, additional and uh, stable revenues. It allows managers to focus on the core functions, which are conservation activities. It provides an extra presence in, in the MPA that can help reduce harmful and illegal behaviors. And it promotes sustainable commercial activities um, and is in this respect a great way to engage the private sector in conservation. So setting up a concession mechanism consists of six steps. Uh, concessions are slightly more complex to implement than visitor fees, so we really try to give uh, only useful and practical information for its implementation. Uh, for example, you will find information on how to identify relevant activities. As concessions, uh, and this is the difficulty, as concession activities need to be economically viable, but also they must not have adverse impacts on the environment that the MPA aims to protect. Uh, you will thus find recommendations on how to select relevant activities and how to assess the potential impacts on the environment in order to avoid, remedy and mitigate potential adverse impacts. And uh, we also explain how to, to use the concession contract to safeguard the success and environmental sustainability of the awarded concession. Well, again, uh, feel free to download the guide and uh, of course do not hesitate to contact, to contact us if you have um, any questions or comments. Uh, and I will now hand over to, to Guillaume, who will present the support programs we are currently developing to assist uh, MPAs in setting up uh, visitor fees and concessions uh, mechanisms um, within their MPAs. Guillaume, the floor is yours. Thank you very you much, Nastasia. Uh, no, I will, I will ask you to change the, the slides if you... Okay. Thanks. Um, so yes, when we, when we developed this guide that Nastasia just talked to you about, uh, we were thinking, what can we do uh, to offer something that is as uh, as much concrete as possible to the MPA manager? Because in our uh, past experiences working as consultants uh, for marine conservation activities and for the financing of marine conservation, we wrote a lot of reports uh, and work on a lot of projects, and we and we've seen too often, I would say, that. Um, we were writing good reports and they were nice but nobody was reading it and it was not really useful for the people working on the field so the idea of this guide was was really to be as practical as possible for the mpa managers uh, but then um, taken thought we realized that maybe it was not sufficient for mpa managers to have a document a paper document with all the steps and maybe uh, we thought that it would be uh, relevant and useful to develop in parallel to this guide uh, support programs for each of the self-financing mechanisms to help MPA manager in the implementation of the step-by-step -step methodology proposed in the guide. So we already in start, started implemented uh, a support program for the implementation of, uh, of visitor fee in four MPAs in the Mediterranean Sea. And we are currently uh, in the process of launching um, a support program for the, implement for the implementation of concession, um, not only in the Med but also worldwide. Uh, just a quick word, the quick word on the on the visitor fee support program. So we are working um, with. Thank you. <laughs> we are working with uh, with four MPAs at the moment in Turkey, in Albania, uh, in Croatia, and in Montenegro. 
um, and um, this support program for visitor fee uh, what does it con consti consist of uh, so it's a it's a step-by-step -step support that is materialized by different toolkits that we offer that we propose to the mpa managers at each step so basically uh, for the visitor fee support program there are seven steps uh, so first, we propose a toolkit with different support, with different tools, and with different objectives to the MTA managers to reach the first step. When the first step is over, we propose a second toolkit with support, with tools, uh, and with deadlines and with objectives to the MTA managers, and so on. So at the moment, uh, we started the first the first step in September with the four MPA. Uh, we are finalizing the the first step, which is the scoping phase. So we propose to to the MPA managers, uh, several questionnaires related to the legal aspects of their area, uh, related to the tourism activities in their area. Uh, we work with them on uh, a willingness to pay survey, to implement towards the tourists, to assess uh, the potential revenues and the potential amounts that people would be willing to pay through a visitor fee. Um, and then we have regular meetings with the MPA managers to work on these different tools uh, because we do it, uh, we do everything remotely. So the idea is that the MPA managers really um, get uh, get the tools for themselves and use them on their site. And we are working as uh, as in a, in, a, in a back office, let's say, and we help MPA managers to work on these tools and the supports and to reach the objective of each step. So this is really a co-construct approach with the MPA managers. Um, and the idea is then uh, to unlock the process step by step and to move at the pace of every MPA manager to the to the next step, the final idea being uh, the, implement, the actual implementation of the financing mechanism. Uh, next step, please. Next slide, sorry. <laughs> And now, um, so we are launching this call, uh, this support program for the, for the setting up of uh, concession in a marine protected area, uh, not only in the Met, but worldwide. So we're just going to show you the, 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 the video of the, the concession uh, support program. Uh, the sound is not working apparently. Uh, I can hear it, but maybe I'm the only one. No, we cannot. I can hear it. No, we cannot. Yeah, no. no okay. Well, you, 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 you can, you can, okay. It's fine. You can find this video on the, on our website, uh, on Busid website. There, there's the, there's a link at the end of the presentation, uh, with the, with the web page showing, um, this concession support program and the call for expression of interest. Next slide, please, please. So we slightly changed the, the planning, but this is the agenda of uh, the support program that we will uh, that we will follow for the implementation of concessions. So we will start in December or January, depending on uh, the, the case that we are working with, uh, with the scoping phase, really focusing on. Uh, the legal aspects and the contract aspects. Um, and then we have different steps such as stakeholders involvement, uh, the planification and the planning phase, the allocation phase, the transaction phase. So different steps to follow uh, during more or less one year to, uh, to, to finalize the implementation and the signing of a concession fee in uh, the MPA. So the concession, uh, the ones that we are willing to work uh, in, 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 in the Mediterranean MPAs, for example, we know that we have discussed with several MPA managers in the Med, and sometimes the word concession can be misunderstood because people uh, directly can think about, uh, let's say, a negative business approach. And when we talk about concession, we can think about, I don't know, implementing an hotel on a beach or something like that. It's not the case at all. It's really working with, uh, kayaking tour, diving clubs, uh, boat tours, and other small to medium uh, touristic operators uh, to see how we can, uh, how we can 
value the ecosystem service of tourism provided by your MPA towards uh, the tourism operators and show them that uh, it would be good for them uh, to pay to keep a high level of uh, environmental health through the marine conservation activities implemented by the MPA. Uh, so this is really the idea of this concession program to provide MPA managers with a new source of revenues, the concession, which of course will never cover uh, your entire needs. And the purpose of the self-financing mechanism, whether it is visitor fee or whether it is concession fee, um, is not to provide MPA, uh, to transform an MPA into uh, a private entity uh, generating 100% of self-revenues, but it's, uh, the idea is to diversify the sources of revenues and to allow MPA to have a diversified portfolio of, of income and revenues. Um, next slide, please. And so yes, this uh, this concession support program is open for uh, international MPAs. The support will start in December and or January 2022. Um, here you have the link uh, to apply, and if you have more questions, you can ask them now. Or if you have further questions later, you can you have our emails there. Um, next slide, please. And that's it for the presentation. And next slide, please. And now we can move on to the to the Q&A session and you have several links here that uh, if you want to, to take a look at our website and our tools. Thank you very much. All right, thank you both. Super interesting to learn about some of those financing mechanisms and that guide seems like a very helpful and important mechanism to help learn about different financing mechanisms. As a reminder to the audience, if you have any questions, please feel free to enter them into the question box. At the moment, I am not seeing any questions uh, come up at the moment. <clears throat> Although we do, we do have someone who may be asking if there is a translated version of the document available. It's it's only in English for the moment. Uh, we are working. Uh, maybe for the beginning of 2022 in a, in a document in French, but for the moment it's all in English and only in English. Okay, thank you. And related to the, to the if, uh, also I want to add something related to the guide. As Nastasia said, the first chapter of the guide uh, is related to, to the development of a business plan and a financial strategy for MPA. So depending uh, of the stage of development of your MPA, uh, if you need to implement a business plan and a financial strategy, you can also find in the guide a link to download freely a business plan Excel tool to, to implement your, your business, the business plan of your MPA, just so you know. Great, thank you. We do have a question that's come in asking if you can give some examples of concessions to implement and how you go about engaging stakeholders in the process. Nastasia, you want to go? Yeah, sure. Uh, so um, usually concessions are used for touristic activities. Um, some examples are simply like kayaking stores or um, diving centers, um, also restaurants, uh, snorkeling activities. Uh, so a contract is signed between the operators, the private operator and the MPA authority or the public authority that, that has the capacity to award uh, concessions. Uh, and uh, in exchange, the, op the private operator is allowed to, to develop its, activity, its activities within the MPA uh, in exchange of the payment of a fee to the, to the concession authority. Uh, and 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 the uh, the other part of the question was uh, how we how do we engage stakeholders uh, in the implementation process? Um, well, it's very specific to each MPA, to each uh, local context and uh, local stakeholders. But w within the support program we're developing, uh, there is uh, a complete step, uh, the second step of the implementation process that consists in the stakeholders uh, engagement, uh, stakeholders involvement, um, and we assist MPAs uh, 
in engaging discussions and presenting the mechanisms to stakeholders and to the most relevant stakeholders. Um, so it is um, a very uh, an assistance uh, with MPAs that we adapt uh, to their needs and their situations and the local context. But just to to follow up on what on what Nastasia said to give you a few examples, we can identify the, uh, we can identify sorry different typologies. Uh, if you are working, for example, we are working in, in Tunisia um, in a site in which there are tourism operators operating in the MPA for many many years and they were actually operating in the area before the MPA was there and they never paid for a concession uh, so if we were to engage those people in a concession um, of course the way of presenting them uh, the concession is different that if we are working in an MPA in which they are still not uh, a presence of operator and that we want to involve new operators in the process so it really depends on the state of the, the stage of development of the mpa uh, the pre the, the pre-existence of uh, different stakeholders uh, that could be uh, contracting a concession or not and it also depends of course of the relationship you as an mpa manager already has with the with the different stakeholders in place Thank you. Related to the concessions, someone has asked, um, says that it seems like a lot of your financing mechanisms are to different degrees related to tourism activities. Do you have, do you also have any experience advising or developing sustainable funding models related to other economic activities such as aquaculture, small scale fisheries, blue carbon, etc.? cetera? Nastasia, you want to talk about blue carbon maybe? Yeah, sure. That is a very good question. Uh, yes, uh, of course, um, as we mainly focused our activities uh, at the beginning of, uh, of the creation of Blue Seeds, we focused our activities in the Mediterranean region. Uh, tourism was, was our main entry point uh, for financing mechanisms uh, for MPAs in the Mediterranean region. Um, and we, uh, as I said, we are promoting the diversification of funding sources, which is crucial for MPAs to be more resilient. And we are currently working on blue carbon. <clears throat> Again, uh, specifically in the Mediterranean region, we're working on blue carbon related to, to conservation activities of um, Posidonia meadows of seagrass meadows in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, we're also working on developing blue carbon mechanisms related to mangroves in, in Eastern Africa. Um, <clears throat> so these are some financing mechanisms that could complement uh, tourism-based uh, revenues um, and help MPAs to, to diversify their, their funding sources. Um, Regarding aquaculture, there are several studies about that, but it is quite complicated uh, yet. So we haven't uh, worked on that uh, topic yet, um, but it is worth uh, having a look at it, of course, um, because there are lots of aquaculture happening in, in MPAs. For example, in uh, Western Africa, it happens, uh, I think in Scotland as well, if I'm right. Uh, so um, it's worth having a look at it, but we haven't worked on, on that topic yet. Um, and again, we are also working on developing a new chapter uh, of the guide uh, about fundraising, which is one of the main sources of funding, uh, main current uh, sources of funding of uh, Mediterranean MPAs. And of course, all these uh, self-financing mechanisms we have described and we are detailing in the guide uh, are not meant to um, to replace uh, current uh, funding sources for MPAs. They're here to complement, uh, to generate additional revenues. So funding sources, um, so funding coming from uh, philanthropy and public uh, funding are still very important and need to be developed <clears throat> as well. Thank you. Someone asks, in terms of charging visitor fees, does this tend to be managed by a national government agency or are there situations where local groups or organizations or communities have been able to take on this role? This is again a very good question. <clears throat> Sorry. 
uh, it is very specific to the local context and the local legislation. But uh, generally speaking, what we have observed so far is that there is um, kind of a, a national um, <clears throat> collection system uh, that, that then uh, redistributes the, um, the incomes to the MPAs. So, and this is the complexity and the difficulty of the mechanism because MPAs uh, are not able to know in advance uh, how much they will get from the visitor fee mechanisms. So the stakeholders' involvement is very important and the scoping phase, uh, analyzing and understanding how the collection process within the country or within the region is working is very important to make sure that the MPA in the end uh, can get the money that it, it, it has collected um, because this is this is the goal of implementing financing mechanisms to generate additional revenue to uh, finance conservation activities within the MPA. It's very uh, site dependent and and dependent to the local legislation. Great, thank you. Well, someone has asked, the, said they are interested to know if there have been issues identifying who is the relevant body to take responsibility for managing concessions and how these have been overcome. Are there any examples of NGOs being the concession granting body? Uh, I don't have any examples of uh, NGO being the concession authority because it's mainly related to public law and usually the concession authority is a public authority. Um, so it's kind of a public and private partnership. Um, so I would say, no, I, I don't have any example uh, with the NGO being the concession yeah. authority and within the, the, scoping, the scoping phase, which is the preliminary phase for implementing any kind of financing mechanisms, um, there is a, a, a big part of um, analyzing and assessing how the concession uh, framework uh, is working within the country and identifying the, um, the main uh, contact and the concession authority with, with which we'll have to, to deal uh, for implementing a concession. But it can differ from a country to another, of course. Thank you. We also have a question asking if you're open to working globally or are there areas of the world you're prioritizing? When you usually when you usually begin the when, no, I'm sorry, when do you usually begin these processes as well? Are these at the start are these steps in more well established MPAs, or can you begin when an MPA is still in the proposed stage? So there's two questions here in this one question is one is do you work at the global scale or are there areas you're prioritizing and the second is when in the process of MPA planning and designation do these funding processes normally begin? We So we start working on the Mediterranean Sea as I said but now we are uh, opening and, tr and willing to work globally. Uh, the Mediterranean Sea was our uh, we, st we have a lot of, of activities in the Med, but it's like our, uh, let's say, of proof of concept area, and now we want to open it to, we want to go global. Um, and regarding the stage of development of MPAs for the implementation of such mechanism, of course, uh, you need to have an official recognition of the MPA to actually, and, uh, and most of the time, a management plan and a business plan to implement uh, the financial mechanism. So you need to have uh, an MPA, an MPA staff, and you need to have uh, an official declaration of the MPA. But in this super program, we are also working with uh, MPAs that are still at a really early stage. For example, the MPA in Montenegro that we started, that we start working with. When we start working with them, the MPA was not officially declared. Now it's the case um, because um, really often we have worked with MPA that were saying, okay, first we're going to wait for the declaration. Then we're gonna then we're gonna write down and and implement our our uh, management plan plan sorry, and then we will think about uh, this financing mechanism. What we say to the MPA uh, to the MPAs is that it's really important to uh, think about uh, the fundings, uh, the potential fundings and the potential financial needs, and so think about uh, the different potential self financing mechanisms that you could implement way way ahead. So once uh, 
once uh, you are declared officially and once you have your management plan, you already know exactly what you can and cannot do in terms of self-financing mechanism. And instead of spending maybe three years to implement your self-financing mechanism because you will have to do the scoping phase and the stakeholders involvement if you have started before uh, it will be it will be quicker to implement so we work with we can work with different stage uh, the the only issue is that uh, if we work with an mpa that is already for example in albania we work with mpas that are already declared that already worked in the past uh, on two financing mechanism and that have a good of the understanding of the legal aspects. So they are ready to move forward and maybe to implement uh, those financing mechanism for summer 2022 or 2023. Um, and if we work with MPAs that are at an early stage, maybe the support program will not uh, will not bring the MPA in one year to the actual implementation of the self-financing mechanism, but at least it will provide uh, uh, good information, good knowledge to the MPA staff to be able to lobby to the different stakeholders for the implementation of self-financing mechanism. Thank you. Uh, someone said that they noted your point on revolving fund mechanisms for small scale fishers and that it sounded like this might be linked to EU funding for member states. They're first wondering whether or not it is and second they're wondering that if it if it was that or if you have any also have some experience in a revolving fund for small scale fisheries more broadly. Yeah, yeah we have we, 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 we are working on two different examples so one let's say standard revolving fund not related to EU funding and the other one is WWF related to EU fundings. Uh, so the one related to EU fundings quickly, uh, we have the, in Europe, we have the, we, the European Maritime uh, and Fishery Fund, uh, which provide uh, fundings for fisheries, small scale, industrial, and unfortunately not only <laughs> to, to finance, uh, let's say, sustainable activities, to be honest. Um, and the problem we have in Europe is that uh, these fundings, uh, the fishermen will have the funding only once their project is over, so they need to have upfront money. And small scale fishermen, they don't have upfront money, so they never apply to this kind of funding. Plus, there is a big, a really heavy uh, and long administrative process. And so it's only, let's say, the big players of uh, fishery in Europe that can access and that access actually uh, this EMFF funding. And so the idea of our uh, revolving fund of our pre-financing facility uh, is to uh, give loan money at the moment at 0% uh, uh, interest rates, loan the money to those small-scale fishermen and give them a technical assistance to write down their project and to go through the heavy administrative process so that they can uh, access this EMFF fundings uh, to finance, of course, sustainable uh, activities and uh, the transition to, let's say, for example, sustainable fishing gears. And then once their project is over, uh, and once the European Union is saying, okay, you did what you, what you planned, we will give you the money, then they give, us back, they give us back the money, and then we can, use the, we can loan the money to another fisherman, and so on and so on, hence the revolving aspect of the, of the fund. Uh, and we are also working on a case study developed in Morocco, uh, developed by one of our partners that has done a, a really great job on revolving fund. Um, okay. So they had uh, a 50,000 a 50, grant from the MAVA Foundation. They, uh, the, uh, the association is called AGIR, so it's a, it's a marine conservation association working in an MPA in the National Park of Alosema in the north coast of Morocco, the Mediterranean coast. Um, and they use this money, they, 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 grant, they loan this money to some small scale fishermen of the area. Um, and when they, they loan the money to the fishermen, they, they tell them, okay, uh, we give you this money, but you can only use it to, uh, to change your fishing gears and to go from your harmful fishing gears to more sustainable fishing gears, especially uh, sustainable and uh, locally crafted uh, fishing gears made from a, a, women, a cooperative of women. And then uh, the fishermen that change their fishing gears, they go fishing so they, 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 have, uh, they have less impact on, on the less negative impact on the fishing stocks. And then they sell uh, their fishes in the fish market of the town. The fish market is controlled by a public authority, the National Office for Fisheries, and they take a percentage of 
their uh, everything they sell and this percentage is put is put back in the in the fund and so once again once all the money can come back to the fund uh, the association can help other small scale fishermen and so on and so on that's the that's the idea and this one is not related to to eu fundings thank you for those examples we have a couple of questions that have come in about transparent transparency uh, in the funding process. So one simply asks, how do we ensure transparency in financial mechanisms? And is there an example of those successes? And the other question goes a bit further asking, how can private sector and other community stakeholders in MPAs make sure that the fees and concessions are managed transparently by, gov by the government MPA authority? And is this lack of transparency often an issue? Yes. <laughs> Thank you for, for the question. This is a very, a very important point. As um, all along our research to to develop this uh, practical guide on financing mechanisms, um, we found that uh, to foster uh, private sectors or of just visitors to to pay uh, fees for marine conservation. It's crucial for them to understand how this money will be used. Uh, so, um, as part of our support program, and as we describe it uh, in the guide, we we encourage uh, MPAs to to develop communication tools um, and um, education program to communicate about how they are using the collected uh, the the money collected through the visitor fee mechanisms or the concession mechanisms to to be able to to show and to prove the contributors. Uh, that they are using this money for uh, marine conservation, which is the goal. Uh, I have to to recall it uh, several times because this is very important. Uh, that's what we were promoting. Um, when the money is um, managed managed by um, a higher public authority, it can be difficult sometimes for the MPA to to be that transparent. Uh, but this is why it is also very important to work with the the public, the managing, uh, the MPA managing authority. Um, for example, if uh, MPA is managed by an NGO, this NGO need to close to work very closely with the public managing uh, authority of the the MPA to make sure that uh, the budget and how the money is spent. Uh, can like like how the budget is managing is transparent and uh, and that they they can communicate uh, about it uh, transparently uh, to the public. This is something very important and this is something that is crucial uh, to to engage uh, visitors and the private sector to contribute to marine conservation. I think that, that there was another question. Can you just repeat it. Sorry. You seem to have largely answered it. It was they were both around okay. transparency. Okay. We have time for one last question, uh, so we'll make it one that's that sounds somewhat straightforward. We'll see what it actually. We'll see if it actually is. Uh, and someone asking if you have an estimate of, uh, of the proportion of MPAs budgets in the Mediterranean that come from self-financing sources. It's really really low, actually. It's really, really. Low. That's why we, that that's why we are trying to, to work on that in the med, and it's not, it's not. We, we we have made a study in 2015 when we were Vertigo Lab, the consultancy firm, uh, related to the financing gap uh, of marine conservation in the med. So the financing gap is the difference between the needs and the budget available, uh, and we identified that there was a lack of seven. 100 million euros per year to cover all the needs of MPAs in the MED. Uh, and most of the money that was in the budget were coming either from the governments or from the donors. There are some, there are some examples that are really, I, I wouldn't say original, but not really replicable of MPAs that uh, have self-generated revenues. For example, uh, the most important the most famous one in the Med, I would say, and you can find it in the guide, is, is the the island of Brioni in Croatia, in which they have uh, they have an island in the MPA with hotel, with restaurants, uh, with a boat, and everything is run by the by, by the MPA itself. So they generate their own revenues 
for a, a big percentage of their budget. Uh, but most of the sites, whether it is on the north part or the south part of the MED, uh, the self-financing mechanism are really low. And one of the issues uh, is that in the MED, for example, uh, a lot of MPA were relying on the funding from the MAVA Foundation, which is a philanthropic foundation that will seize all its funding activities into, at the end of 2022. And so there is a risk of uh, a lot of MPAs losing part of their budget. So that's why now it's really urgent for the marine conservation sector in the MED to think about diversification and to start uh, thinking about self-financing mechanisms. Great, thank you. Well, with that, we are unfortunately out of time. So I apologize to anyone whose questions we did not get to. Um, we will be providing the questions to the presenters so they have the ability to follow up on anything that might be necessary for follow up on. And with that, I would like to say thank you to both Guillaume and Nastasia for the presentation and thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. Uh, thank, thank you, you Sarah, much, and thank everyone. you all participants.